Welcome to Behind the Space Bar, episode four, Beat the Resistance. Hey everybody, this is Will Dog. If this is your first time joining me, then welcome to Behind the Space Bar. If uh, you're returning, you're a returning visitor, then welcome back. Glad you're here. Uh, if you've never been here before, this show is all about tips and tricks for playback techs, musicians, anyone using Ableton Live on stage. And we kind of talk about two different things, what I would call head knowledge and heart knowledge. And we have some episodes that are a little more head knowledge. They're a little more how to do this particular thing in Ableton Live. Then we have some episodes like today that are a little more heart knowledge, the stuff that we got to get right, uh, things that I think will help make you a successful playback tech, a successful musician, a successful uh, person existing in the world, having a job and making a living. Okay, so uh, today's episode uh, actually wasn't planned and wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, today's episode was supposed to actually was never on the list of ideas. Uh, I had a great episode planned for this week, which is now being moved to next week. Um, but, uh, today's episode was exactly what I needed. And I think it's what a lot of you need. And in fact, I, I would venture to say it may be one of the most important episodes we've done or will do. Um, so let's start at the top here. The name of the episode is beat the resistance. Uh, yeah. some of you may know where I'm going. If you've, you've read the great book, the war of art by Stephen Pressfield. And if you haven't, then you're going, what in the world is he talking about resistance? This is like about Ableton live is what is he, what is he talking about? I don't get it here. We'll get there in a second. Uh, but no matter what role you play, if you are stepping on stage uh, as a musician, music director, maybe you're even backstage as a playback tech, maybe you don't even ever step on stage because you're a playback tech serving off stage. But um, if you are involved in the creation or the, the production performance of music in any capacity, then you're a creative individual, right? And you may be going, well, you don't know me. I'm, I'm highly technical. Like I'm the production guy in the back that's figuring out how to connect everything, how to, to solve problems. I'm not in there writing music. I'm not creative. You are creative. Um, you're, you're, you're in the process of either creating, producing, performing music. You're creative, right? And I think everyone is creative. I think all of us have some creative capacity. But with that creative capacity, uh, with creating art, and you may be going, Will, you're, you're really going off the rails here. I don't create art. I'm not an artist. Well, <clears throat> I like to follow what Seth Godin uh, kind of believes about artists, which is everyone is an artist. Everyone can approach their work as an artist and, and as an artist as opposed to a technician. In a lot of ways, a technician is like, I need to do my job. Give me a list of tasks to do. Give me the exact manual on how to do it. And I'm going to follow those instructions to a T. And there's nothing wrong with that. What Seth Godin says is artists are people that follow more of a compass than a map. They're people that walk into a situation and they need to, to troubleshoot. They need to solve a problem and they don't necessarily open up a manual and go read that manual and figure out how to solve the problem. They just go, OK, let me use the skills I've learned in the past. Let me use the experience I've learned in the past to see if I can solve this problem. So what I want to get in your head first before we talk about today's episode is you're an artist. You're creative. If you're in any form of creation, production, or performing of music on stage, you're creative. And it doesn't matter the type of music. It doesn't matter the venue. You're in a small club playing original music. You're in um, a smaller club uh, doing covers. You're in um, a, a, a giant stadium playing original songs from a, a giant pop artist that we turn the radio on and all of us would know who she is or who he is. Uh, or you're a worship leader serving at a small church, big church, whatever it is. If you're involved in the creation, production, performance of live music, you're creative and you're an artist. And there's this interesting thing that happens whenever you go to create art, whenever you go to create something, is you create it, you feel this in, this terrible fear before you release it, and then you finally release it into the world, and then you anxiously await, what's that first comment going to look like? What are people going to say? How are people going to respond to it? And... Um, in the process of creating, in the process of um, preparing, uh, in the process of rehearsing, you're rehearsing with the artist, uh, you will continually feel these moments of what Stephen Pressfield calls the resistance. Uh, if you've never read this book, I've linked to it in the show notes of this. It's called The War of Art. Uh, the subtitle here is Break Through the Blocks and Win Your Inner Creative Battles. I will say single-handedly, this is the most important book that uh, I have ever read as far as a, a, a creative goes, you know, in my creative endeavors of creating content for the internet, being a content creator, whatever you want to call it. Um, my endeavors of writing songs, producing music, doing sound design, uh, being a playback tech. Um, the most important book I've ever read that's helped me understand issues, understand what I'm going through is the war of art by Stephen Pressfield. 
in that book, um, Stephen presents this idea of the resistance. And he basically says whenever you, you go to, and he personifies it really well, but he says whenever you go to create any creative art, whenever you go to create anything, do any creative task, there is going to be this force in the universe that comes at you that's called the resistance. And he personifies it really well, but he talks about how it's this force that tells you, hey, don't do not do that video. You need to, it needs to be a little better. You need a better camera. You need better lighting. You need better audio. You need a better script before you can do that. <clears throat> you're in a rehearsal working with an artist and uh, you're just a hired gun. <clears throat> you have no real relationship with the artist. You have uh, you know, no real trust other than the fact that they hired you to do the gig. But in that moment, you go, you know what? It'd be really cool if we did this. And in your head, you're going, should I say something? Should I not say something? Stephen Presswell would call that the resistance. It's it's doing everything it can to keep you from, uh, <clears throat> from creating your art, from releasing your art, releasing your ideas in the world. And so he throws out this idea of the resistance. And the resistance is a real thing. This idea of when you sit down, put your butt in the chair to do the work, um, there will be something emotionally, there'll be something physically, there'll be things surrounding you in your environment, there'll be tasks that you have to do for your other job, there'll be so many things that come at you to try to keep you from doing your work. I, I, again, I'll make it very practical. So we're in 2022, if you're listening to this and it's 2026 and the world hasn't ended yet, uh, and we're at episode whatever, we'd be then 400 or, or whatever, maybe I think it'd be a lot longer to be at 400, but you, you get the point listening far in the future 2022 i've committed in 2022 to release a piece of content every single day now that's on top of releasing a course a month releasing a patch a month releasing a pad collection a month for subscribers uh those are people subscribed it from studio to stage um and that that's been my commitment and we are on uh as i'm recording this it's january 20th uh thursday january 20th this will release the next monday um, and I typically record all my content on a, on a Monday for the week ahead. And then I have weeks where I get ahead. Uh, for instance, this past week I had a two day event. And so I recorded content for this week that's airing as I'm recording this. I know the, the, this is confusing, but anyway, I record in one to two week sprints, right? Uh, capture all my content and then release it all on the Monday and it trickles out throughout the week. It's been working really, really well. I enjoy it. I've gotten a lot of really great feedback from you guys. Thank you for the text. Those of you that have my number, thank you for the messages. Those of you who've messaged through the site, uh, emails, comments on YouTube. Uh, it's definitely encouraging. And we'll talk about that in a moment as something to continue to do. Um, not just for me, but for the other creatives in your life. But uh, it's been going really, really well. Well, this week rolls around. Monday's a holiday, so I take Monday off to, to be with my family. The kids are out of school, so that's good. Tuesday rolls around. Uh, I had a couple meetings and then after that I had a troubleshooting thing that, that went a little longer that I had to go drive, uh, to a campus to go fix. Uh, so Tuesday was kind of shot. My emotional state when I got home, I was just super tired. Uh, Wednesday it rolls around and, uh, I have Wednesday morning off. So I'm like, this is great. I'm going to shoot some content, come in the office to do it. And it's just like not happening. Right. In, in fact, I turned the camera on to shoot the content. And I look over here at my monitor to see, to check it out. And I'm like, it's very clear that I'm exhausted. It's very clear I should not be recording content right now. This is not going to work. So Wednesday <clears throat> continues uh, on. I have to go to some meetings. I come back. That runs long. Um, and it's just like Wednesday's not happening. So I finally roll around to Thursday and I wake up and I'm just like, you know what? I am just not feeling it. I do not want to go record today. I don't want to create content. And I've got an editorial calendar that's got the whole quarter mapped out. Like I know what I'm going to be doing. I just have to do the work to do it. And um, I was just reminded this morning of that idea that Stephen Pressfield talks about, which is the resistance. What is the resistance? It's anything emotional, physical, it's going to get in the way and keep you from doing your art. And again, you may be looking at this and going, well, you're getting too new agey. You're getting too artsy fartsy for me. I'm not an artist. I'm a playback tack that's on the road. I'm rough and tumble, dude. I'm not an artist. Uh, this is too emotional. It's too touchy feely for me. Right. Uh, but you are again, because uh, in that moment, how you approach your work, you, you really have to be an artist to, to do anything um, in live production because what's your job? To solve problems, right? If you're a production person, you're a technician, your number one job is to solve problems. Yes, it's maybe to, to, to 
do backline for this artist. Maybe it's to set up rigging for this artist. Maybe it's to be the lighting person for this artist. And yes, that's your job. But ultimately your job is to problem solve and problem solve in a way that people don't know that there's a problem. Something comes up, you really quickly go, okay, it can be this, it can be that. Okay, it's this. And then you go and solve it, right? That is uh, what an artist is. So you are an artist. Anytime you have that idea in your mind of something you want to share, you want to speak and you feel that fear of like, I don't know if I should say it. Uh, it's not good enough yet. I can't release it. Whatever it is, that's the resistance. And so I want to wrap up this episode talking about how we can beat the resistance, some very practical things. Again, you are an artist, whether you're a technician, whether you're actually creating the, the songs, if you're any way involved in creation, production, and performance of live music, you're an artist, right? Even if you're a technician, you are um, problem solving and there's nothing more artistic than problem solving. So let's talk about a couple of ways to, to beat the resistance, a couple of practical uh, things that, that I think are super helpful. And I've got some other book suggestions here that I'm going to bring up uh, to mention that I think are super helpful. Number one, do the work every day. Um, I'll, I'll contextualize that to my situation. So for me, uh, I am releasing content every single day, but I'm not necessarily in the studio, in this studio here, recording content every day, but I need to be. I need to sit my butt in the chair, do this work every single day, because what it does is it starts to build a muscle. Seth Godin, another, um, I mentioned him a little bit earlier, a great book that he's written, I've got one more I'm going to share, is called The Practice, uh, Shipping Creative Work. And here's the thing with Seth Godin, my buddy Aaron, who's editing this video, hey Aaron, uh, he'll tell you, I, I often send him a lot of Seth Godin books and he'll write, he'll read it to his credit. He'll read it and he'll write back. He, I don't know, man. I just don't, I don't, I'm not feeling it. I don't agree with him here or whatever. And I really enjoy that process. Um, I know some people that if you read like the book reviews for some of Seth Godin stuff, people will go, uh, particularly his book here at the top that you see, this is marketing. Um, you'll see him say, uh, people will say he, he provides no practical tips. He provides no practical, uh, you know, suggestions on marketing. He doesn't talk about SEO. He blah blah blah. Well, that's not Seth. Seth is not going to deal in the how. He's going to deal in the why. He's not going to deal with the head. He's going to deal with the heart, right? And he's going to talk more about getting the inside stuff worked out, getting that mushy, touchy feely stuff that none of us, well, most of us, don't want to talk about. Especially, uh, I mean, this is stereotypical. Especially, you know, the rough and tumble guys. The again, the guys that are out doing the, the technical things, uh, producing music. They're like, we're not into this touchy-feely junk. Uh, but Seth deals a lot with the heart stuff. And he talks about in the practice um, how you do the practice uh, not for profit. You don't do the practice um, uh, really for any other reason than the, the practice itself. Uh, the, and, and it's the idea of you've got to sit down, you've got to do the work every single day. Because if you do the work every single day, then you're going to build that muscle. You're going to build the muscle of like, um, I even feel it for me. Again, I recorded all of my content that went out this week, a week ago or longer. And so it's been almost a week since I've set my butt in this chair to record content. And I, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 15 years or something. Uh, it's not like it's a struggle for me to sit behind a camera and talk and I have plenty of words to say. But every time I would sit down, I I just go, I don't know what to say. You know, like I'm not feeling it. I'm not in the mood. But the more you do the work, the more you consistently sit down and say, every day I'm going to come into the office, I'm going to do the work, I'm going to commit to the practice, the better you'll get. So for you, I don't know exactly what that looks like. If you're a technician, uh, again, if you're someone that's going, well, I can maybe buy into this, but I still don't think I'm an artist. Uh, and you're going, I'm just there to, to set up cables. I'm just there to do backline. Like a, there's no art to my job. Um I think there is. I think there is. And the art for your job you're going to find is in problem solving. And so um, I, I think one of the ways that you practice that you do the work every day is one, you just show up. You're just practically there doing it. You commit to doing it. Uh, even when you're off, there's something that you're pursuing. You're pursuing knowledge. You're going to, to you're trying to find um, solutions to problems that, that you're, uh, you're, you're, discovering uh, solutions to problems that you know are, are coming up um, again maybe something is you're on the road and and I think Seth does, talks about this really well with the idea of what an artist is um, instead of just saying I'm just going to show up I'm going to do my job I'm going to do it well enough to get a paycheck and I'm going to leave that's not being an artist that's being an employee that's being an hourly employee clocks in clocks out you go home an artist walks in and goes and you notice, you look around and you go, interesting. Every time that the artist that I'm working with, the the uh, the person who's paying my bills, essentially, 
every time they're backstage, you know, they're doing a wardrobe change or they're backstage during a break. They're always wondering, you know, they always want a bottle of water or they always need more light to see this or do that. Well, if you're an artist, even if you're the person backstage plugging in cables, you know what you do? You go solve a problem that no one asks you to solve. That's doing the work every day. So I think part of that practice doing the work every day is just simply noticing. <clears throat> Notice problems that you can solve. You're used to solving problems. You solve problems for a living. That's all you do. That's all we do when we're in highly technical things. You solve problems. So try to solve problems that no one asks you to solve. Now, don't be a nuisance. Don't get in people's business. And you know this. You're If you're listening to this show, you're a smart person. You're not an idiot. But don't get into people's business, but at the same time, solve problems that people didn't ask you to solve. That's a good way to do the practice. Um, I, I think tied into that, and Seth really talks about this in this book in particular. Uh, he talks about, uh, and this is called Lynchpin, Are You Indispensable? This is, uh, along with The War of Art, these are two of the books that have really shaped my entire life, the direction of my life, uh, pretty, pretty drastically. Um, and, and this book, I remember reading this when I was in North Carolina, sitting in a Starbucks, uh, and I did an early release of this book and Seth sent it to me with a note, which was really, really cool. Uh, I think he did a Kickstarter for this book, if I remember correctly, but, uh, and I have that giant book behind me that has the, the, uh, what is it? Ducks or whatever on it. Uh, that's a Seth go to book that came with this, but that's neither here nor there. But, um, anyway, I remember sitting in the Starbucks in North Carolina, reading this book and it completely shaped how I approached my work. Again, you look at the title, Lynchpin, Are You Indispensable? That's what I'm talking about. Even if you're a technician, you're solving problems that no one asks you to solve. Uh, it's super important. But one of the concepts Seth presents in that book, and I believe this was the first time I heard him talk about this. You know, He's, he's a guy who, who writes a blog post every single day. He's a marketing guy, entrepreneur, uh, business leader. But uh, this is the first time I heard that concept is he said, I don't believe in writer's block. There's no such thing as writer's block. And people go, well, yeah, there is because I struggle to create I, you know, I, I'm blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, it's just resistance. It's fear. And he said, plumbers don't get plumbers block. Plumbers just show up to someone's house and they do their job and they go to the next job and they do their plumbing work. And then they go to their next job and they go home. And he said, the reason writers think you get writer's block and you may feel resistance to that. Let me know in the comments if you're watching this and you're like, that's bull crap. You know, writer's block is a real thing. I haven't written blah, blah, blah. Well, what Seth says, and there's some really good interviews. I'll see if I can dig some up and link to them with between Seth and Brian Koppelman. Um, I forgot Brian's podcast now, but it's really, really good. And they kind of argue. Brian argues the side of he's a screenwriter, cre highly creative guy. And he's like, no, writer's block is a real thing. <clears throat> and Seth would argue and say, no, writer's block is not a real thing. It's a fear induced thing. It's the resistance coming at you. And the way to, de to defeat writer's block is to keep doing the work. And he says, um, writer's block is just your fear of you created something and you think I'll never create something as good as that ever again. And the solution to that is keep creating. Uh, Austin Cleon talks about it. Uh, again, I forgot the name of his book. I'll, I'll look this up and, uh, and link it in the show notes. But it's the idea of um, if you need to release an album of 13 songs, you don't write 13 songs. How many songs do you write? Maybe 100, 150 and then out of that, you get to those 13 songs that are really good art. You think about Pixar, watch any documentary about Pixar, uh, how they create. They don't just come up with a perfect storyline and then just create it and do it. Uh, yes, they've created movies for, what, 20, 30 years, whatever it is now. Um, and they still struggle. They still create crap at first. and But they keep going and they keep trying and they keep releasing it and they're good to go. Um, so number one, do the work every day. Uh, number two, here's my second tip and then we'll wrap up is uh, create a sacred space. And what I mean by that is wherever you go to create, and I know this is maybe a stretch because some of you are highly artistic and I'm not saying you're an artist, but you're maybe highly artistic and you're a songwriter and you go to write songs and that's how you make your living. Some of you are uh, playback techs and you're a musician and um, you're a musician and you do playback for an artist. Some of you, again, are maybe just more on the technical side and you're going, you know, what the heck are you talking about a sacred space? Well, this right here that you're looking at in my office, this is my sacred space. And what I mean is when I come into this place, I try to keep it as clean as possible, which sometimes I do better than others. I see some stuff behind me I could maybe tidy up. So some days I do that better than others, but I've got it set up so that I walk in, I press one button on my phone, my lights turn on, I'm ready to record. In my sacred space, it's set up and it's prepared for me to create. It's prepared for me to do my art. It's prepared for me to do my work. And I try to limit the amount of distractions. Now I've got my phone next to me because I've got to run to a meeting in like 10 minutes. So I got to land the plane here, wrap up this pod uh, here, here quickly. 
Um, but I try to keep my phone out of this space. I, I try to, I definitely, I'm not on social media, so I try to, I don't have to worry about that, but I know some people that work in an office and they leave Slack open on their monitor the whole day. Like there's no Slack in this room because this is a sacred space. It's a space to where I walk in and I close the door and the resistance is not allowed in the door because I have created and made this a sacred space. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, I don't know exactly what that looks like for you. Um, maybe it's just literally putting your AirPods in when you're out on a tour, you're on the bus, and that becomes your sacred space to listen to an audiobook, to listen to music, to grab a piece of paper and go, what are ways I can get better? What are ways I can do my job better? Um, uh, what are ways that I can fight through apathy? On one of the other podcasts I have called Volunteer Friendly, and that's um, uh, just for for worship leaders, people serving in a church. It's it's fully directed to that. But one of the things we're talking about in um, in this season, I can't remember exactly what episode because it hasn't launched yet, but it's pre-recorded. Uh, talking about fighting apathy, and and I think one of those ways to fight apathy, one of those ways to fight like you're just showing up, clocking in, doing your job, clocking out. Uh, to get a paycheck is constantly think, how can I do my job better? That's being an artist. That's doing your your job in a creative way, right? So find that sacred space for you. Again, it may be a physical location that you have kind of primed and try to keep it as clean as possible. Try to dedicate it to a uh, single use space, if you will. Um, maybe it is for you. Let me think of another practical way that um, that I talk to people a lot, particularly folks that are playback techs is maybe your sacred space is just devoting time every week to going. Uh, remember last week's episode where we said humbly confident, humbly curious. Maybe it's devoting time to going, hmm, I wonder if there's a better way for me to do this or going, hey, you know, I know Nam is right around the corner. Let me pay attention to what new gear comes out. Let me pay attention to what announcements are made. Um, and see, you know, I wonder if I can include that piece of gear in my setup and make that happen. That's a sacred space because you're devoting time to figuring out how to do the art better, right? Figuring out how to do your job better. So if you want to beat the resistance, two practical ways I know, number one, uh, do the work every single day, sit your butt in the chair, do the work, right? Uh, on writing by, St uh, Stephen King, he talks about that. Like you got to put your butt in the chair and do the work. Um, number two, create a sacred space. Find a space, whether it's a physical location that's a single use, single purpose space like this studio is for me, um, or it's it's just you putting AirPods in and, and, and blocking out an hour a week trying to figure out how to improve your playback rig. Maybe it's you practicing as a guitar player every single day and, and committing to, I'm going to work my way through this uh, Berkeley Jazz you know workbook or whatever it is you're doing. Maybe you're a technician and you go, um, I want to continually be improving. And so I'm going to take this class, this certification. I'm going to continually, every gig we're in, make sure things look super, super neat and clean. That's something I struggle with. Make it super neat and clean. Uh, and I'm going to find problems no one asked me to solve and I'm going to solve them. I'm not even going to look for the recognition. Uh, it's kind of like on The Office, I'm about to wrap up here, but it reminded me of the story. It's kind of like on The Office when Dwight leaves. And Michael goes, you know, why are all the plants dying? Why are the toys on my desk not arranged? And they go, well, Dwight did that. And he never did it for the recognition. He just did it because, believe it or not, Dwight Shute, Shute is an artist. He's a creative. And so he went in and said, I'm going to solve problems no one asked me to solve. That's, I think, what we're called uh, to do. Um, so that's it. Again, I think this may be one of the most important episodes we've done on Behind the Space Bar. It's more heart than head. And we'll get to some of the stuff that's, more head than heart. So bear with me. It's not all going to be artsy fartsy on the show, but I think this is a super important one because you are an artist, you are creative. So keep creating, keep pushing through, keep doing the work. Um, as we wrap up here, I want to let you know if you're a playback tech music director, musician using tracks on stage and you want some extra help, um, you want some free resources to help you do that uh, a, a little better maybe a little more efficiently, maybe you've got a problem you're wishing to solve, then head to from studio to stage.com slash free from studio to stage.com slash free. And as the title says, you could probably guess how much those resources cost. And that is a big fat zero because they are free. And we've got a lot of great free resources there. You can see all the other content we uh, I release. And again, releasing it every single day in 2022, I'm going to punch the resistance in the teeth and keep going and keep fighting. Uh, and so head to from studio stage.com slash free if you're interested in that. Um, and as always, uh, if you're enjoying the show, share it with someone that means a whole lot. Um, leave a rating and review on uh, Apple podcasts, wherever you're listening, if you're watching on the YouTube, give us a thumbs up, <clears throat> hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, 
And uh, if I don't see you before then, I'll see you next Monday, 10 a.m. Central. Same exact place you're watching this. Same exact place you're listening to this. I'll see you there. I'll meet you there. You just open up your podcast app. Open up your phone. I'll be right there waiting for you. So see you next week, next Monday, 10 a.m. Central. Take care, everybody. Bye.